Alhamdulillah, all praises for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most gracious, the most merciful. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all his favors and gifts that he has bestowed upon us. And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the tawfiq to be early for Jum'ah today. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us his complete reward. Today's topic of discussion is about a concept mentioned in the Quran of a sick heart. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about a heart that a human being's inner self has to be rectified, which is uh, also known as tazkiyah. Tazkiyah means self purification. So <clears throat> I recited before you the one verse of the Quran which translates that abstain from outward sin and inward sin. So as Muslims, you have two types of sins, outward sin, and then lying, uh, uh, something that you do outward, some, a wrong transaction, and so these are sins of the outward, then there's inward sin, wrong feelings that you have inside, wrong thoughts that you have that you entertain. So Allah SWT gives us a command that you abstain from these inner vices. Also in the hadith, Rasulullah SAW has mentioned that the cleansing of the heart we know that the, the soul of the human being, it's called ruh or it's also called qalb. It gets dots on it when you do when you do vice in the world. When you do sins in the world, what happens? It gets a black, it gets a dot on it. And then you keep doing that sin continuously and it gets more dot, uh, spots on it. And the only cleansing mechanism is zikrullah, is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or doing, and doing tawbah from it. <clears throat> so as Muslims, we have to remember that our heart also becomes sick, just like our body becomes sick. Our heart also becomes sick, just like our body becomes sick. And what we find is that people, when, it, when their body becomes sick, we do all kinds of things. We all have a primary doctor. Then we go see specialists, right, depending on what the illness is. We do what it takes. Sometimes we sell, you know, if we have, um, what are money we have left? Savings. If it's an illness and it needs to be removed, wouldn't we spend that money? Right? Human beings value their life. You do it for your body. If you have to give up half of your wealth for your illness of your body, you will get, get, spend half of your wealth because your body rectification is so important to us. Now let's think, now your soul, that making sure that your soul is not sick is much more important than that. Much more. Much more. Because look, if your body becomes sick, worst case scenario, worst case scenario if your body is sick, you will die. That's the worst case scenario. You're going to pass away. But if your soul has become sick, then you lost this world at the Akhirah. And in this world, it's possible that your, that your soul becomes, your ruh, your qalb does become sick. And you have to, and Allah SWT is not going to, Allah SWT, is, Allah SWT tells the Quran that when you show up on the day of judgment, He wants to see a sound heart. What kind of heart does He want to see? Sound heart. So you and I have to figure out that how do we get this sound heart? How do we do tazkiyah of this heart? And if our heart is sick, also the ulama, the scholars of tazkiyah say, not just sickness, also it could die. You could also have a dead heart. You, 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 you died spiritually. You're physically alive, but you're spiritually dead. You're not going to get away with that on the Day of Judgment. When you show up on the Day of Judgment with that sick heart or that dead heart, it's very hard on the Day of Judgment. This, this topic that I'm telling you about, this is um, supported by many ayats of the Quran. Much of the hadith are all of this subject. I'm just giving you the summary of many, many ayats and many, many ahadith. This concept of tazkiyah, concept of tazkiyah, that Muslims try to strive for a sound heart. This is actually is farz. Now, when I say the word fard, you may think, well, there are so many things that are fard in Islam, right? Every commandment in the Quran is what? Farz. Well, let me tell you about tazkiyah. Tazkiyah constitutes one third of your religion. One third. One third of your whole Islam is about imaniyat. The whole one third is your physical submission and the whole one third is for tazkiyah. So it's not the same kind of farz. Like zor namaz is also farz on you. But your tazkiyah is also farz, but just to highlight the importance of it, 
it's one third of your religion. So as a Muslim community, <clears throat> just like we, we have to be very, very mindful of Tazkiyah, that this Tazkiyah takes place. <clears throat> also, if a person doesn't, when you don't, again, as I said, if you have a sick heart or a dead heart, you could have a dead heart. Allah mahfaz min. How do you have a dead heart? The definition of a dead heart is you disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala till the point that the darkness became so much, you, you, the tawfiq of tawbah has been taken away. Now you've lived your whole life like that. Like your, your heart became dead when it was 30. Now you passed away when you were 60. Right? So when you sh show up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you realize that my heart was already dead from 30. I passed away when I was 60. So we have to figure this out. What is this our deed require us of? Tazkiyah. And we Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. Then we amal upon it, inshaAllah. When you have a sick heart, dead heart, right? Either it's going to become dead, either it's going to be sick. But if it's sick, but if it's sick for too long, it'll become dead. Uh, also, what happens is it's khasira dunya wal akhira. You're a loser of the dunya and the akhira. You, you won't even be happy. All your happiness will be taken away as well. It's, it's like a side product. You lost in this world and you also lost in the hereafter because of the illnesses of the heart. You'll never become true happy. True happiness cannot be attained through the disobedience of the Creator. It can only be attained through obedience of the Creator, outwardly and inward. So, um, this topic is mentioned in the verse of the Quran Man amila saliha bin dhakar wa utha wa mu'bin. That a male or a female, once you live a righteous life. It's not saying it very explicitly here, but all scholars will agree righteous life means that your tazkiyah is done, right? You're a person with a clean heart, not a sick heart. That will give you a, a beautiful, good life. So that ayah that talks about, I will give you a good life. Obviously, this is for people with tazkiyah who have cleansed their heart. Their heart is not sick. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. Don't worry, inshallah, today's lecture, I'm about to give you some uh, wordings of Imam Ghazali rahmatullahi alayhi, that's going to show us how we can do this tazkiyah, inshallah. And then may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this topic will become easy for us, inshallah. <coughs> <coughs> the, the diseases, what makes your heart sick, these are called muhlikat. Like they, they are muhlikat. They are the destroyers. And just like when you're, when you're in the world, right? Don't you get sick from time to time? You get that seasonal flu. You get this virus come. All of a sudden, this is aching. That's aching. And you try to maintain a good health, right? You try to get your blood work done. You can maintain a good health. Spiritual illnesses are similar. They come and go. Some of them, the ones that you did rectify, they will carry on. The ones you didn't heal, they'll carry on. And it comes and goes, comes and it just comes. You have to be mindful. As Muslims, one third of your Islam is based on this. How can we just ignore it and sideline it? You cannot sideline this. So Imam Ghazali, rahmatullahi, and this is the main crux of my speech. Let's talk solutions. What are the solutions? Imam Ghazali rahmatullahi, says, you know Imam Ghazali, right? Everyone knows Imam Ghazali, right? He was a scholar of many, many arts, many, many sciences. And he was especially known for tazkiyah. He was especially known for Tazkiyah. Those of you who, who know the biography of Imam Ghazali Rahmatullah. Imam Ghazali Rahmatullah says there's four ways of Tazkiyah. Let's talk about solutions now. How do we make sure our heart is not sick and neither, and na'uzu billah, being dead in the world. <clears throat> you can always bring it back to life, by the way. If you're wondering if my heart's dead in the world, how do I bring it back to life? You can bring it back to life by doing Tawbah. By doing Tawbah from that thing that you never let go of. Does that make sense? It's like your physical body when you're dead, you can't come back to life. But your soul when it's dead, you could bring it back to life. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Because your soul is to live forever. Inshallah. In Jannah, inshallah. Yes? Jannah without accounts, inshallah. That's what we're striving for. Inshallah. You have to show up on the Yawm Al-Qiyamah with a sound heart. What do we have to show up with? Sound heart. Tazkiyah is also known as the third dimension. The third dimension of Islam. If somebody doesn't have, I'm, I'm kind of sidetracking a little bit, but it's important. Um, Iman, Islam, and Ihsan. If somebody's Iman is not correct, his beliefs are not correct, he should not even dream about Tazkiyah. That man should not dream about Tazkiyah because his Aqaid are wrong. Does that make sense? Let's say he got rid of all his spiritual, his heart is perfect. But if his Aqaid are wrong, is that going to work? That's not going to work. It's like step one, it's a hierarchy. Step one, step two, step three. Iman is the Aqaid, beliefs. Islam are the submissions. That you're doing your acts according to the Sunnah of Rasulullah, according to the dictates of the Sharia. And number three is Ihsan, where you've reached purification. Where you're doing it perfectly according to the Sunnah of Rasulullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that tawfiq. Alright, so now coming to the four 
steps that Imam Ghazali says of Tazkiya. Number one, now it's a hierarchy. Uh, if we could do all four, it'll be great. Um, <clears throat> the first one that I'm going to mention, that's the primary, and that is Suhbat Salih. Be in the company of a pious person. <laughs> that's the first one. A pious person, Ahli Ilm or Ahli Zikr. Scholars are of two types. Some are Ahli Ilm, some are Ahli Zikr. Some scholars are both. They're Ahli Ilm and all of Ahli Zikr. Be in their company. When you interact and just be in their company, not just in their class, just be in their company, understand? And you interact with them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts cleaning out your, your heart, the illnesses, you start to identify them. You'll start to go. And that man that you're hanging around with, who's, who you're considering the salih, the naked man, whatever purity of heart he has that he's achieved through his striving of ilm and zikr, you'll achieve that right by his company. It's like it'll just, you'll just sink with him. That, that's number one. And that's the first one on the hierarchy. So may Allah SWT grant us tawfiq. Alhamdulillah, we have lots of Ahli Ilm, Ahli Zikr. Alhamdulillah, now in the US we're blessed. Understand? We're not short on them, we have so many. And then there's some more senior than others. So let's, let us take that step. Let we spend some time of the week in the company of Ahli Ilm, Ahli Zikr. And interacting with them. And interaction is very important. Like when you're studying a science, you interact in that science and you become better at that science. So tazkiyah is also like that. When you interact with the, the Ahli Ilm, Ahli Zikr, with that niyyah, that I'm going to try to pray with that Ahli Ilm, Ahli Zikr. Hang around with him. Whatever masjid he goes to, go to that masjid. Make sense? Sit with him. Hang around with him. Talk to him. Just if you don't have a question, make up a question and ask him. You need some way to interact with the Ahli Ilm, Ahli Zikr. Allah SWT do the barakah of this because you're thinking of him as a pious man. Inshallah he is, right? Then Allah SWT does your cleansing of the your heart, you start to become better. You, you, your heart, your heart gets health. Your ruh starts to, to get health. And we have seen this. We have seen this happening. We have seen people who are far from deen or almost heading on the right wrong track when they got into the company of Ahli Ilam, Ahli Zikr, their lives were just switched, turned around. Just few in proper interactions with Ahli Ilam, Ahli Zikr, just a few. This is the barakah, it's, it's something Allah has created. Do you get it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has left us in this world the revelation. Also, He's left us the men of Allah. See, when me and you think, oh, nobody's pious, everybody's na'uzubillah bad, then you're accusing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa couldn't produce pious people in the world. Do you get it? So you have to trust someone and be in their company. And then you'll see it happening. You'll see it. We have seen it. People have interacted a little bit with Ahli Ilam, Ahli Zikr. Their whole life changed. They're about to head on the wrong track, they got on the wrong, right track, and today their children are becoming half his alim. And it was just about that one decision that they made, that I'm going to start hanging around with this Ahli Ilam Zikr from now on. So this is the most powerful one. I'm, don't worry, I'm coming to number two, three, four solutions, in case you want to go down to B now. But this is it. <coughs> Allah SWT mentions this in the Quran as well. Ittaqullaha wa kunu ma sadiqeen That attain the taqwa of Allah by being with the righteous. <clears throat> so then Allah SWT will give your heart health through it. You will start achieving it, inshallah. Um, as, number two. Number two is muakhat fillah. Although I, I think number two and number three, by the time when Imam Ghazali wrote this, rahmatullahi alayhi, I don't think he knew about our phones, the mechanism that we have. The next one he has is muakhat fillah. Being brother for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's saying that if you can't find Ahli Ilm, Ahli Zikr, get a good friend, get a pious friend that you and him hang, hang around with each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you make a deal that if you see something wrong in me, tell me, I'll change. I see something wrong in you, I'll t t tell you and inshallah you'll change. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the hadith, the habani fillah. They love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Azali Ali says that if you hang around with a good friend like that, with that contract, and you stay close for 40 days, your heart will also start getting health. Easy? Inshallah. But I'm thinking, look, nowadays we have cell phones. I don't think we need to go to step two because look, even if you are in, even if you're at a distance, can't you still call Ahli Ilm, Ahli Zikr? Can't you? Yeah, you can still be in contact. I think this, when he wrote this, there was no phones and text messages. So maybe he was assuming that you're in some jungle and you can't, there's no, you know, there's no postman. No one's going to get your letter to the Ahli Ilam Ahli Zikr. So since you're in the jungle, you just have some friends around you who are not Ahli Ilam Ahli Zikr, but you'll make this contract and you'll do your tazkiyah, your heart will be, get health. That's what I'm thinking. So do you see what I mean? 
And some scholars have said all the four mechanisms that Imam Ghazali is saying, let's follow all of them. Inshallah, let's follow all of them. Inshallah, we can do it. You'll find a friend. Right? Everybody has a friend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you only meet that friend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you interact for the sake of Allah. So if they see some flaw in you, then <coughs> um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us such friends, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a tawfiq to hang around with good friends. Islam's concept of good friends is that if you don't have good friends who are not who are gonna inspire you and put you on the wrong track, then being alone is better than being with friends. That's the Islamic concept. Islamic concept, if there's no good friends, you'd rather be a loner. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us this, inshallah. The third solution Imam Ghazali says, rahmatullah alayhi, he says, let's say you have no ahli ilm, ahli zikr in your city. You don't have that friend you're going to do that contract with. Option number three is listen to your enemies. Anybody who doesn't like you. I'm sure you have some enemy, somebody, some relative or friend or somebody who doesn't like you. And they always talk bad about you. So listen carefully about what the bad they're saying about you and take it serious. Take the critique of your enemies serious. Do you have anybody around you who says bad stuff about you? Who says how terrible you are? Anyone, could be anyone. Then that person, how are they, how are they critiquing you? Listen carefully. Sometimes they might be making up stuff. Ignore that, the stuff they're making up. But some of the stuff they're saying might be true. Listen closely to your enemies. They might be critiquing you and they might be right, you are wrong in some ways and then you do islah of that try to change that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your heart will become you'll do, you'll do, you'll do your own tazkiyah you'll start to become a better person so that's option number three everyone's got it? inshallah number four is muhasaba let's say you don't have this friendship you don't have your enemies you don't have ahli ilam ahli zikr you are such a busy person but now you need to cleanse in this Heart, he says force, and force is mashallah super option, which is muhasaba. Muhasaba is that when you sleep at night, take your own accounts. Every night, just take your own account. Look, when we show up on the day of judgment, Allah SWT is going to take our account. It says in the hadith, take your own accounts before your accounts are taken on the day of judgment. The way you take your accounts, very easy. You just look at your whole day and say, look at all the right things I did today. Right? I studied, I did all the things correctly. Give shukr. When you give shukr, that means Allah is going to increase you. And all the things that you did wrong, or any time wasted, any, you do istighfar from that. So Ghazali Rahmatullah says you could do the fourth one. This is tazkiyah that you can do by yourself. You all like this option? You guys are not talking. You like all the options. Inshallah, are we going to do all the options or are we going to choose from the four? Let's do all of them. Let's do all of them. Muhasaba. Every night. And Hazrat Mullah Shafi Tan, oh, but let me one more side note on this one. When it comes to you saying istighfar at night, as far as the hukukul ibad, the kafarat are concerned, you still have to pay those. Let's say you owe somebody money, but every night you're sleeping saying, Ya Allah, forgive me, I, I owe that person money. You still owe that person money the next morning, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's not going to cover the payments that you have to make. Does that make sense? Hukukul ibad. If you have to say sorry to someone, you need someone's forgiveness, that's not going to be covered by your istighfar at night. But everything else, inshallah, will be covered. If you owe some fasts, that's not going to make it up just because you're saying istighfar at night. You still owe those fasts. So aside those things, everything else it'll take. And Hazrat Mullah Ashraf Ali Thani Rahmatullah Have you heard of Mullah Ashraf Ali Thani Rahmatullah He was such a huge scholar. Before India and Pakistan was built, he was one of the, he would be like hands down one of the top scholars of India and Pakistan. And so many of the ulama are all his direct students. Mullah Ashraf Ali Thani Rahmatullah says that if somebody just does muhasaba, if you just did muhasaba, he says, I give guarantee you're going to go to Jannah. He's saying your tazkiyah is being complete. This is like a self-help technique for tazkiyah. Mullah Shafali Tanwi Rahmatullah says that if somebody just does muhasaba every night, insh I give guarantee, Mullah Shafali Tanwi Rahmatullah, inshallah you're going to Jannah. The reason he says that is that he's saying that look, every night you're going to sleep and seeking forgiveness, doing tawbah every single night. So if you pass away the next morning, your records are already what? cleared. Let's say you pass away in the midday, how much record do you have to give account for on the Day of Judgment? You just have one half day to make, assuming what time are you going to pass away? Are you going to pass away midday? If you pass away midday, then you made muhasaba at night, then when you show up on the Day of Judgment, inshallah, inshallah, you only owe accountability for just that morning. And when it comes to kafarat, just remember, make an attempt. If you have missed prayers, if you have made payments, just do tawbah to Allah and start taking some steps towards it. 
then we hope from the fuzzle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us. Everyone likes option four? Which option do you like? Option one, option two, option three, or option four? But inshallah, Allah give all of us tawfiq, we should do all the four options. Just remember that tazkiyah is farz. We have to make sure we go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sound heart. Also another thing, important note on this. When we're talking about cleansing the heart, and then going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sound heart, you have to first turn off the tap. The scholars say it like this, turn off the tap. Like it's like saying, look, you showed up at your house, for example, you came to your living room and you saw a leak. You saw a water leak. What's the first thing you're going to do in the living room when you see a water leak? Are you going to start cleaning the water? Huh? Let's stop the water first, then clean up afterwards, right? No one's going to start cleaning first and not stop the water. So the scholars of Tazkiyah say that first stop the disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See all the four options I gave you, let's say you're doing these four options, but the leak is still happening. You're still disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by looking in the wrong places, by saying wrong things. Then all these four options don't work for you. You can hang around with all the Ahli Ilam, all the Ahli Zikr, do Muhasaba every night. Because your example is like a person who still left the tap on. Get the leak is still happening. You're cleaning up every single day. But every single day you, the, it's still going to fill up. So first, well, just like when you see a leak, what's the first thing you do? Turn off the water source. Turn the water source off, then do Tazkiyah. Allah SWT make it easy for us. We're going to turn off the water source. Right? Any, any disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to turn that source off. Then do tazkiyah. Then inshallah we will show up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sound heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us tawfiq. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do, his, do our tazkiyah from his great fadl inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best person to cleanse in us. Right? It's all in his control. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today, this Jum'ah, by the barakah of this Jum'ah, do our tazkiyah. Wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillah bil alameen. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanallah al-azim La ilaha illa huwa ar-Rahmanu ar-Rahim